Mike Ransom was killed in Afghanistan last year in August. Uh, he was 24 year old, just a young guy, couldn't find a job. He said the military was what he could do job, accommodation, food, you know, the usual sorts of stuff you get from the military. Uh, but now there's 263 soldiers are dead. That's 53 since Kevin's death. Mm -hmm. So that works out now. Last year it was one every four days on average, now it's one every three days. <coughs> and this is going to continue to rise and rise and rise, and it's just not on. Gordon Brown, he said that the soldiers were there to protect British lights uh, from you know, stop terrorism in this country. But I'm sorry, but the soldiers are British too. They're not all people who are interested in Afghanistan or care about Queen and country. They're just kids in the main who came from poor areas who wanted a chance to earn some money. Um, Gordon Brown also states that being across there stops terrorism being exported to the UK. Well, there hasn't been any terrorism from Afghanistan to the UK. The two attacks that originated in the UK were made in Britain. The only terrorism I can work out is we in the West who are exporting our terrorism, the terrorising of civilians in Hemland just now particularly. I mean, it must be horrific. Yeah, it's a horrible thought. I do accept that the Taliban are a vicious and a sexist organisation. There's no way we can support them. But there's been no improvement in conditions of women or anyone else since the occupation. And as I say, the Taliban are a nasty law. I don't blame them for my grandson's death. I uh, blame firmly at the door of the present and previous British and American governments. They're totally responsible in this unacceptable war. I mean, many Afghanis reluctantly support the Taliban as a lesson of two evils. And the Taliban or us. I think you can understand the reasoning for supporting the Taliban. Um, offering money either, you know the way they're talking about giving thousands of pounds, millions of pounds to the Taliban, it won't work. Because as far as I know, the Pashtuns are a very independent people and they won't do it for money. I think, in fact, most of them are fighting for Islam, as opposed to money. That's just me saying what I think, I'm not saying that's right. But they're proud people and they'll not be able to get bought over. And, well, there's no good reason at all for the invasion. The one offered by Phil uh, Willis, our asylum minister, really disgusted me. He said, our soldiers are in Afghanistan to stop the Afghanis immigrating to this country. Uh, if Afghanis are coming to the UK to ex ex escape the conflict, we should be welcoming them with open arms. The conflicts of our making, not theirs. To the best of my knowledge, they never attacked anyone before we invaded them. None of the stuff was went down to the Afghanis at all. I mean, they're fleeing Western terror. For me, the real reason <coughs> for Afghanistan is profit. For places like the Carlyle Group, BAE, um, and the, uh, just all the multinationals. It's making very rich people a great deal richer. Um, for the Carolina Group, for example, in the recent past, they have had George Bush Sr., George Bush Jr., and John Major on their board. You wonder that why they support the war. A great many military supplies. Last year, PEA made a profit of £22.4 billion. Pounds. And most of that, I'm sure, came from what we're sending to Afghanistan. Uh, well, we sell things like arms, ammunition, and of course, they built the Nimrod aircraft. That we all know about the Rimrod, dangerous it is. Um, I can't bear to think that my grandson and all the other people who have died in Afghanistan was to line the pockets of the multinationals. I think it's, it's disgusting, and as far as I can see, that's all the reason for speaking. Like. And until now, I haven't said much about the military. Uh, while I have some support for the troops on the ground, <coughs> fighting every day. I have none whatsoever for the more senior soldiers, especially Nick Carter. He um, commander on the ground in Afghanistan and Sir John Stirrup, the head of our armed forces. Carter stated that the area, South Helmand, must be given to Karzai's government to run, while accepting part of it will never be governable. And Karzai is a corrupt politician anyway, so it was a corrupt government. I don't see why they would want to hand it to somebody like that. And we also know that as long as the invaders remain, it will be ungovernable. I mean, it's just not going to happen. And then now, Sir George Stirrup, 
He has apologised profusely for the deaths of 17 civilians in South Helmand during the latest incursion. There's been no apologies, apologies for the thousands of Afghanis who have died since 2001. I mean, do we believe he really cares about any of the deaths in Afghanistan? I really don't think so. Our troops have got to come home. Too many deaths and maimings on both sides. As it's now 2010, surely the world has moved on enough to realise that the simplest solution for all is not to wage war anymore. Defend if attacked, but if no one was the aggressor, there'd be no need for wars. Thank you.